Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Okay, this little video is going to be very fast, simple, and quick. Now, if you look at my knee over here, you see I got my knee pad on. Very important if you're going to be working on concrete. Okay, up here. Alright, so what we're going to do is everybody is misconcepted on how to actually wear knee pads. And when you put them on the way that you think you put them on, they always seem to tend to fall down. Am I right, Minnie? Yeah, you see so, that a lot. When you put your knee pads on, they always fall down to here, and then you always got to pull them up, or it's pulling your pants up, or whatever you're doing. So what my friend Pete's going to do, I'm sorry, that's me, is I am going to show you how to correctly put a knee pad on properly. Now, uh, this can apply to any knee pads. A lot of people out there wearing knee pads, uh, we got, uh, what do we got here? We got carpenters. We got DIY guys like myself. Carpet layers. Uh, we got carpet layers. Tile we got tile guys. guys. We got, you know, everybody once in your lifetime is going to have to get on your knees. And I strongly suggest that if you get on your knees for a long period of time, you should always wear knee pads. Now, the knee pads I got, of course, I went over to the local hardware store here in town where we're at. Uh, these were the cheapest ones they had. They cost twenty dollars. Do you think that's cheap? No, you can get them at Harbor right. Freight for. You can get these for about three or four dollars at Harbor Freight if you're in a town where there's a Harbor Freight. Right. Uh, Moab, Utah doesn't have a Harbor Freight, so you got to basically, unless you want to drive all the way to Grand Junction, Colorado, and spend sixty dollars to buy a four-dollar pair of uh, knee pads. You're pretty much stuck with the $20 price, plus tax, I might say. So these were the cheapest ones I found. Of course, they had some there, believe it or not, that were like $89. Wow. Yeah, a little ridiculous. Uh, so what we got here, we got a knee pad on my friend Pete's knee that's going to protect me. But now let me show you the correct way that you should put knee pads on. They'll never fall down. They'll always stay up. You don't have to worry about pulling them up, pushing them down, all this other stuff. What you're going to do is when you put that knee pad on, um, you're going to adjust it to your knee, of course. Let's get down the road with this. It's getting a little bit boring. So you're going to adjust that to the, the speculation of what you think. And then, of course, naturally what you would do is you would take this one and this one would go here like that. And then the top one would come over here. And that is where you, the carpenter, is screwing up, see? And I'm going to show this. Even seasoned carpenters out there, the seasoned carpenter. You know what a seasoned carpenter is? Somebody's been doing it a while. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, the seasoned uh, frying pan. You know, it's an old used pan that's been doing it for a long time. Even the seasoned carpenter is going to wear the knee pad like that. My friend Pete's going to show you the right way to wear them. They'll never fall down, guaranteed. They'll stay up all the time. You don't have to worry about it. What we're going to do, it's very simple. We're going to go ahead and take the strap off like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom strap around the lower leg part. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring it up to the top. Do you see how I just did that? Then we're going to go ahead and pull that strap, if you can get it out. Like I said, these are cheapos. And we're going to tighten that up. Obviously, being the cheap son of a bitch that these are, these actually are the same kind that you can buy at Harbor Freight for $4. So uh, I can't even get that off. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up just a little bit. All right. And you kind of get the picture now. But let me tighten that up because you want it to be pretty tight. You don't want it to be loose. Cheap son of a bitch. Did I say that yet? Okay. So then we got our knee there. And then you're going to take the top strap bring it around and then you're gonna pull it like this now most common straps that you're gonna find they're gonna be the elastic kind it's not gonna be this hard thing and then you'll of course if you got good knee pads not cheapos like this uh, you'll be able to take that strap and pull it and then it'll tighten up now what you're looking at I'm gonna go ahead and stand up 
Okay, uh, if Minnie could get a gander in the back of my knee there, you can see that the straps are crossed. Right. And what that's going to do, that's going to keep that strap, that's going to keep your straps right there locked into the, uh, what do they call this here, the back side of your knee? The nape? Would that be the nape of your knee? Uh, the back side of the knee, I don't nape. know. Nape. What's a nape? I don't know. We don't know. Anyway, that's the way you do it. And then see, as you can see, I'm hopping around. I'm jumping. You see what I'm doing here? I'm walking. And I'm just moving and dancing and moving my knees around. And you can see they stay in place. And now we're going to get down on our knees. See there? And it's always going to be where you want it when you do it the My Friend Pete way. Uh, crossing your straps the proper way to put your knee pads on. I got electrical to do. I got work to do. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Taking the $20 cheapos and installing them properly. Thank you. Thank you. for a little hike here. You're going to bring your hot chocolate with you? Yeah, we're not doing We're up that. here working on the shop. It's snowing out. This is the first day it's been sunny out since we've been here for a whole week. I know. So we're going to this place and it's called the Powerhouse. Now this used to be like only locals knew about it. But then some Yahoo or some jerkwad decided to publish this in a, a little tourist magazine and made it really, really popular. And um, now this is a swimming hole. Uh, it's a famous swimming hole, and what it is, it's an old waterfall. Uh, I don't really know the whole original story of the whole situation, but what we're going to do is we're going to walk down there, and we're going to see if the powerhouse is still in action. Now there's other places you can go out here um, if you want to hike, like I don't know, about a mile and a half up the road. And then you go around and all the way through the canyon there. And then there's these other waterfalls up there. And you can actually literally get up on the cliffs and jump into the water. Yes, my friend Pete has done that before. Uh, it was a very uh, exhilarating experience jumping from a 100-foot cliff down into uh, crystal clear river water, I guess you would call it. But uh, where we're going right now, it's called the Powerhouse. And uh, this used to be a hidden treasure uh, place once again, but now that it's uh, well known, you can basically see that even in the wintertime, people will hike out here to come check out the powerhouse. So we're out here working on our shop, um, putting in all the electrical, and uh, let me tell you what, this week has been a bitch. It has been a real, real bitch because it's freezing ass cold. Today's actually the first sunny day that it's been since we've been here. Um, hopefully we're gonna get all our electrical done and uh, many of the body shop girls working their ass off. I just want everybody to know that. So give many of the body shop girl a big hand. She is one hell of a worker. One hell of a partner too, I might say. But uh, we love many of the body shop girl. But, you know, we're moving to Moab. That's where we're going. Um, and uh, this is where we're at, is in Moab, right here. Um, I don't know if we can get up to the... It's looking like it might be a stretch to get down there. So let's see if we can get down there, and hopefully we won't fall along the way. Hey, watch your step. Check out this animal track over here. It looks like a bear or a wild cat or something. Benny. Son of a bitch. I hope that bastard doesn't uh, come face to face with me. 
because I'm going to hightail it out and run if I can. Coming or what? Actually, I think the powerhouse is up there. I don't think it's over here. I think we're in the back side of it. But come on over. I'm going to show you how crystal clear this water is. You can actually drink this. So what you're looking at right here is actually the bottom of the river. The melt from the snow. The Sal Mountains. And let me tell you something. That water is probably about... 65 degrees below zero. I'm not even going to think about getting in that. Look how crystal clear that water is. Huh? Alright, here's a waterfall. Let's go check it out. Well, this definitely isn't the powerhouse. I think we got to go back up that way. Let's go that way. We're going to go find the powerhouse. Let's go. Look, somebody was riding their bikes down here. Manny. Somebody was out mountain biking in the snow. Man, that looks like bicycle tracks to me. I think we better walk the trail up and see if we can look down at it. Because it looks like it's pretty treacherous here and I don't want you to fall. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You don't even have shoes on, basically. Exactly. Let's get back up there. Come on, your feet are going to get wet. And we'll walk up the trail. Well, how'd we get up? Back there. Right there. You're already losing your way. You're not good on directions, are you? Okay, but look here. Look, look. Is this burning? Does this bring back any memories? Climbing down them rock. Oh look, there's the chutes. Look, come on over here. There's the little chutes where you, you slide down through the rocks. Let me see if I can get over there. I can't really get a good angle of it, but look at it. You remember all that? Look. And then you slide all the way down through there. We're going to go up there to the powerhouse. Look, there's a waterfall right there. Yeah. Let's go check her out. The famous waterfall of Moab. This is where people jump in. Uh, me and my son PJ came up here. And we get on top of those cliffs right there. Let's get over there a little closer. I don't know how close we can get. We're going to get as close as we can. But, uh, that's the chutes right there. And let me tell you what, the water, when you jump off that rock over there, and I'm talking, you got to get a good run to start, and you jump into the pool, it's an endless pit. The water has been hitting that so long and so hard, that is probably 20, 25 feet deep down there. Uh, you'll never touch the bottom. But this is an awesome place here. If you ever visit Moab, Utah, make sure to come here. This is nature's swimming hole. The best swimming hole you'll ever swim in in your life. Uh, bring some inner tubes, because you'll want to stay here for hours. Am I right, Minnie? Remember that? We had them 18-wheeler inner tubes. So this is called the Chutes, the Chutes of Moab, right here. Let's get a little gander, get a little closer. And even in the wintertime, people come out here and check it out. So as you see, this used to be an old dam. This was an old dam, the powerhouse. This was the water that ran the power for Moab right here. And now it's just naturally open. And as you can see, look at that. Look at that swimming hole right there. And look at that waterfall. Isn't that awesome?
So we're gonna go up on top and check it out. But uh, like I said, we discovered this place from a local guy. Uh, me and my buddy Junior, when me and PJ and Junior came out here, my son PJ, uh, we were in Denny's and me and Junior would fun it up with uh, strangers and so we asked a local guy, hey, are you local? And he said, yeah, I'm a local. What's there to do here that nobody else does that is uh, hidden in the uh, atmosphere of Moab that nobody knows about? And he told us about this place. And when we came out here, there wasn't nobody out. It was just us. We stayed here for hours, jumping off the cliffs, floating in the inner tubes, and just having a hell of a good time. But, uh... Uh, now, it's park. now it's like a, a, a tourist attraction. Yeah. So you can see just by the tracks that it has now become, like many just said, a tourist attraction. But it's a really awesome place. And if you get the chance, visit the shoots. It's uh, pretty badass. So I don't know if we're going to go up here. This looks like ice. I think we better stay off of it. But uh, if you look through the brush there, you can see there's trails that go all the way down there and it goes two or three miles up in there and it's just beautiful. And I mean, even if you don't want to go swimming in the chutes, this place is awesome. So this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. And look, there's the water that feeds that. That's the water. It doesn't even look like a lot of water, but boy, when you get down there, it's really pouring out of there fast. All right, uh, we got to get over to the shop. That was our little... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch it. Easy does it, cowboy. Okay, there you go. All right, we got to get back to the shop. We got a lot of work to do. This is ice right here. Be careful. Let me help you. Come on. Give me your hand. Okay, be careful. That's solid ice. Okay. Over here. Come on. All right, walk. Okay, you got it? Okay. When you're uh, in the snow and there's a path that is solid ice, you should always walk away from the path and then walk on the fresh snow. Don't be an idiot and be a follower. Make your own path in life and be a winner. Or should I say a leader? So this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Getting the shop done in Moab, making dreams come true. Visiting past experiences and passing them on to you. Don't get too close right there. We'll be sliding. No, we don't want it. We'll be sliding down. That's a mudslide right into the river. Let's get back to the shop. We got a lot of shit going on over there. SWRNC Homestead, Moab, Utah, right here. If you live in the surrounding area or state, come on over. I love visitors. I like to shake a hand, make a friend. That's my motto. You know, everybody's a stranger until you shake that hand. And we're all friends. Beautiful Moab, Utah, right here. Back to the shop we go. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.